Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will start designing the scroll spy indicator using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now here we can see there are multiple sections in our design. And here on the right side, we have these dots over here. And when we hover over these dots, we can see the name of the section. So this is the first section and here we can see about. And then we have the next section which is services and then we have downloads and then we have testimonials. Now if we click on any of these dots, for example, if I click on downloads, we can see that we are taken to the downloads section. And if I click on the testimonials dot, we can see we are taken to the testimonials section. So in this way, you can go to any of these sections by clicking on these dots. And we also have the active section displayed over here as a red dot. So if you go to the downloads section, we can see that now this dot has the red color and it means that this is active. And even if you scroll down or up, we can see that the dots are updating over here. So this is what we're going to start designing in this video. Now in this first video, I'll show you how to design all of this and also add the functionality of clicking on any of these dots and going to those sections. And in the next video, I'll show you how to activate these dots. So if you scroll down and if you go to the services section, we need to have the services dot active over here. So we will do that in the next video. So let's get started. <laughs> Right here I have created this folder called scroll indicator and I just opened it with VS code. Now let's create the necessary files. So let's click on new file and let's create an HTML file. I'll just name it index.html and let's also create a CSS file. I'll just name it style.css and uh, let's start with the index.html file. So in VS code you have the shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you will have this basic HTML5 code. Right, let's link our CSS file over here. So I'll just tap link and press tab. And in the href, I'll just tap style.css. Right now, let's start with the markup of our design. Now, the first thing I will do is I'll just create all these sections. So let's create a section. And in that, I'll just have a division with the class of wrapper. And in that, I'll just add the text. So this is about us. And uh, let's copy this and paste it three more times. And for the second one, we have services. So let's type services. And then we have downloads. And then lastly, we have testimonials. Now in your website, you can go ahead and add any content you want inside these sections. Right now, let's create these dots. So further, let's create a division with the class of scroll indicator. Now in this division, let's create anchor tags for all these dots because these are basically links. So let's create an anchor tag and uh, now here for the href attribute, we need to add the ID of the section. So let's add IDs to these sections. Now for the first section, let's add an ID of about. And here for this href, we can just type hash about. And now if we click on this uh, anchor tag, we'll be taken to this about section. Now in the same way, let's go ahead and add IDs for all the other sections. So let's type ID and for this, we'll just type services. And then we have this section, let's type ID, let's type downloads. And then lastly, we have testimonials. So let's type ID, testimonials. And here, let's create anchor tags for all these sections. So let's duplicate this. And here for the second one, let's type services. And then for the third one, let's type downloads. And for the fourth one, let's type testimonials. Now there are some more things we need to do in the HTML, but before that, let's start styling this. So let's go to a style.css file. And uh, first of all, let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks. So I have this extension called live server installed in VS code. So once you install that, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And now here we can see that our content is displayed in the browser. So let's go back and uh, let's go to our style.css file. And the first thing we will do is we'll just remove the margin from the body. So let's tap body and let's tap margin zero. And now we can see we don't have any margin for the content. And the next thing we will do is style the sections. So here we can see we have all these section tags. So let's tap section. And for each of the sections, let's add a height of, let's try 70 viewport height. And uh, let's also add a background color. And let's set it to, F1, F, A, E, E. 
and if you go back to the original design we can see that for one section we have a different background color and for the other section we have a different one so we have alternate colors over here so let's go back and uh, let's type section colon nth of type and here I'll just type even and for even sections let's add a background color of white and now we can see we have different colors for different sections right now let's go back and here we'll just add a font size and we'll just set the font size to 40 pixels and we'll set the font family to Roboto and sans serif and we'll also set the font weight to bold and let's also change the color of the text to dark gray right now let's add a max width for the wrapper so here we can see inside the section we have this division in the class of wrapper so let's type section wrapper and let's set a max width of 700 pixels and let's also add a padding of let's try 32 pixels and let's also bring this to the center so if I add a background color over here here we can see it is on the left side so let's type margin 0 and auto to bring it to the center and let's remove this background color right now let's start designing these dots so if you go back to our HTML file here we can see we have this division with the class of scroll indicator so let's target that here I'll just tap scroll indicator and in that we have anchor tags so let's add some content to the anchor tags so that we can see it so I'll just add some text over here and now if we go back here we can see we have the anchor tags displayed over here now we want to bring it to this right side so let's go back and uh, let's target the scroll indicator so let's tap scroll indicator and let's set the position to fixed and uh, let's set the right position to let's try 100 pixels and uh, we'll set the top position to 50% so it will be 50% from the top and it will start from the 50% mark so here we can see it starts from the 50% mark so for that you also have to type transform translate y and set it to negative 50% and now we can see it is exactly in the center now we need to bring all these uh, anchor tags one below the other so let's set the display to flex and flex direction to column and we'll also add a gap of 40 pixels right now let's add some padding to these anchor tags so that we can click it whenever we are a little near to the anchor tags so here for the anchor tags let's add a padding of let's try 10 pixels and now we can see when we are 10 pixels near the anchor tag we can click on that right now we don't want to have this text over here for the anchor tags we need to have these dots so for that we're going to use after selector so let's go back and let's go to the HTML file and let's remove all these uh, text from here and let's go back to our style or CSS file and let's access the after selector so let's tap scroll indicator a colon colon after and here we need to add a content property and here if I just type ASDF and if you go back here we can see that ASDF is displayed over here so we can add extra content to our uh, elements using after selector so what we're going to do is we're going to position these after selectors relative to the anchor tags so here for the anchor tags let's tap position and let's set it to relative and here for the content let's set it to position absolute now we don't want to have any content so let's remove this content from here and we just need to have a dot so let's set the width of the dot to 10 pixels and the height to 10 pixels and we'll also set the border radius to 50% so that we have round shape and we will add a background color of black and now if you go back here we can see we have these dots displayed now if you go back to our HTML and if I add some content over here we can see that the dot is not exactly in the center so for that we have to type top of 50% and left of 50% and we also have to type transform translate to 50% for the x and the y axis now it will be exactly in the center so here we can see we have the dot exactly in the center of the anchor tag now let's go back and uh, remove this content right now the next thing we need to do is we need to add an active class for one of these dots so here we can see by default we have the first one active so let's go back to our HTML 
and uh, for the first anchor tag let's add a class of active and let's go to a CSS file and uh, let's add some styles so here we need to type scroll indicator a dot active colon colon after and here we need to change the color of uh, this dot to red so let's type background and let's set it to red and we also need to scale it up a little bit so let's type transform scale and let's set it to one point let's start 1.3 now if you go back here we can see that we have a larger scale and red background color for this active dot but we can see that the position of the dot has changed that's because here we can see we have added a translate of 50 percent to the x and the y axis and here in the active class we are adding a scale of 1.3 for the transform so this value gets reset so i'll just copy this from here and i'll just paste it over here so we have the translate and also the scale now if you go back now we can see that we have the correct position for the dot now if we click on any of these dots we are taken to that section but we need to have a smooth scroll for that so for that let's go back and uh, here let's add a property to the HTML and let's type scroll behavior and let's set it to smooth and now if we go back and if I click on any of these dots we can see we have smooth scrolling Right now the last thing we need to do is we need to display the section names over here when we hover over these dots. So if you go back to the original design and if you hover over this we can see that the section names are displayed over here and we also have a little bit of animation. Now for that we're going to use the before selector so let's go back and uh, here we can see we have already used the after selector. So let's type scroll indicator a colon colon before and here we need to add the content. And for the content we need to add the section name so for now i'll just type about and here we can see about is displayed now let's style it so first of all let's set the position to absolute and let's set the right position to 24 pixels and let's set the top position to 50 percent and transform translate y and let's set it to negative 50 percent so that it is exactly in the center and now here we can see it is exactly in the center Right now let's add a background color and uh, let's set the color to red and let's set the color of the text to white and we'll set the font family to Roboto and let's set the font weight to bold and uh, we will set a padding so let's set the padding to 2 pixels top and bottom and 16 pixels left and right and uh, let's set the text transform to uppercase and let's set the font size to 13 pixels and let's set the pointer events to none so that we are not able to click on these uh, section names so let's type pointer events and let's set it to none and now let's add a box shadow so let's type box shadow and let's set the values to 0 7 pixels 14 pixels, negative 6 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.8. Right now, the next thing we need to do is we need to display these section names only when we hover over these dots. So, by default, let's set the opacity to 0, and we'll also bring it from the right side a little bit. So, here for the transform, I'll just change this to translate. And here for the x-axis, I'll just type 4 pixels and negative uh, 50% for the y-axis. And let's also add a smooth transition. So I'll just type transition and let's set it to all 400 milliseconds ease. All right, now let's write the code for the hover effect. So I'll just type scroll indicator a colon hover colon colon before. And uh, here we'll just set the opacity back to 1 and I'll just type transform translate and let's set it to 0 for the x-axis and negative 50% for the y-axis right now if we go back to our design we can see that the section names are not displayed by default and if we hover over these dots we have the section names displayed now the last thing we will do is we will add the correct section names for all these dots so let's go back and for that if we change this to something else it will have the same name for all the dots so for that we're going to use data attributes in HTML 
So let's go back to our index.html file and for each of the anchor tags we will add a data attribute. So let's type data hyphen and here you can add any name after the hyphen. So here I'll just add a name section and let's set it equal to what we want to be displayed over here. So I'll just type about and uh, let's add the data attributes for all the other anchor tags. So let's type data hyphen section equals services and here let's type data hyphen section equals downloads and then lastly we have data hyphen section equals testimonials and now we need to access these data attributes in our CSS so let's go to our style.css file and here instead of adding the name directly let's type attr for the attribute and here we need to add the attribute name so let's type data hyphen section and now if you go back to our design and if you hover over the first dot we have about displayed and for the second dot we have services displayed and for the third dot we have downloads displayed and then we have testimonials so everything is working all right and if i click on any of these dots we are taken to that section so that's basically how you can create scroll spy indicator using html and css now in the next video i'll show you how to add the active class to the current section dot using javascript so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.